What an exciting message today in the Torah, brothers and sisters. I am so blessed to stand before you today and tell you what I found in my treasure hunt. Um, I'm going to go have a go at the pronunciation of this word. I can't remember how Pastor Dale pronounced it already. Va'et ha'anan. I pleaded, I besought. Moses pleaded with Yahuwah, our God, to let him into the promised land. And Yahuwah said no. I think he teaches us in this passage, in this part, in this knowledge, that sometimes when we plead for the most important thing to us, sometimes the answer is no. I Think about it. Moses took these people through battles and conflicts, an 11-day journey that took 38 years. Sounds like my walk with Yeshua. And still, Yahuwah said no. It did not diminish Moses' faith in Yahuwah at all. So the book of Deuteronomy is the last book written by Moshe, who was the first of the patriarchs to prophesy the coming of Messiah. Moses was the only prophet that Messiah compared himself to. Moshe said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Think about it. Deuteronomy itself, this book, is characterized by a message of great urgency. Moshe knows he's going to die soon. He knows he's got a bit of problem on his hand with these people. <laughs> In fact, he possibly anticipates that they will break the law again and hurt, uh, grieve the Holy Spirit and Yahweh our God. But he reminds them with fervor and, and enthusiasm, remember when we were at the foot of that mountain and Yahweh was before us. He set the mountain on fire for us to tell us his commands. There's just ten of them. So he says, your eyes have seen Yah, what he did at Baal Peor, for Yahweh, your God, has destroyed from among you all the men who followed Baal of Peor. Peor is a mountain. Baal is a Canaanite god. It is the uh, goddess worship cult that remains with us today. I mean, if anyone has ever looked at television, movies, the internet, music, we see this goddess worship in the form of sexual immorality in our face. They're trying to to convert our children to their religion. Isn't it so? And so Moses' message to the Israelites of then is pertinent to us today. Who here figures themselves an Israelite? Yeah. We are converted by God's great wisdom and mercy. We are no longer Gentiles. We are no longer slaves. Obedience brought them through battles and conflicts. And in Moses, verse 6, urges the Israelites, therefore be careful to observe these commandments. He urges us this today. For this is your wisdom and understanding. He tells us to watch ourselves, to be vigilant, take heed, mind yourself. Keep guard over your own soul. And the best way to do this is to obey the commands. Didn't Yeshua, our Yeshua, ask, if you love me, keep my commands? And Paul, apostle to the Gentiles, who we modern Israelites now grafted in, were once. In his letters to the, uh, letter to the Galatians said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled by a yoke of bondage. The key to this liberty is obedience to the commandments given us so long ago. Let me read to you from Isaiah, the Haftorah. It's just so beautiful, and it's just so beautiful. I'll read fast. 
Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of Yahweh shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Praise be to God.